Hi everyone and thanks for watching our latest instalment of Two for Your Toolkit. This is number 9 and remember the aim of these sessions is to make sure they are easy to follow, show you how it can be useful and how it's compatible in your classroom. In this session we're specifically going to look at using PowerPoint Live with subtitles to help support EAL pupils within your classroom and that's going to be with Fiona Gardner. We're also going to be joined by Tracy Mutter to look at Word Roll. First up to date is Fiona Garner, who's a history teacher from Grangemouth High School, who's going to share an idea for a tool that she thinks you could add to your teaching toolkit. Specifically, she's going to explain a little bit about how she uses PowerPoint Live within her classroom, and specifically the Live Subtitles option to make learning more equitable for her pupils. So let's get started, and I'll pass you over to Fiona. So recently I have been using subtitles over my PowerPoints and lessons to help our new English as an additional language pupils. We've had a number of pupils arriving at the school and they're now over a variety of our year groups. So this is meaning that we can have back-to-back -back lessons and back-to-back -back different subjects here in Humanities where we are needing to have different EEL support in place. And these subtitles have been a really easy and quick, effective way to help these pupils to access the lessons on top of providing them with individual worksheets. So I've been asked to share how to make this happen and it's actually really, really easy. First of all, I got a microphone which can be plugged in through USB. This worked a lot better than ones that plugged in through a headphone jack as they weren't picked up very well. And unfortunately, with this type, it does pick up the kids in the room. But once they see the subtitles working and understand why it's there, they tend to be pretty on board with being quiet for it to work. For me, the easiest way to get this to work was to use PowerPoint through your Glow account. So if you go up to the top corner on Glow, it should say My Files and there should be an Outlook option. So once in Outlook, some people might have better folders than mine, but... I tend to just upload the PowerPoint that I'm using on that day and that way it stops it getting too cluttered. So I'll just drag and drop in the morning the PowerPoints that I want. So today we were using um, the Peel of the Nazi Party for our M5 history course where we have a new pupil who has arrived from Ukraine. So to get that to work, we put Ukrainian subtitles over it first. If it loads. Um, so if you go to slideshow up at the top, once it loads, sometimes it takes a little while to buffer, but not too long. And once it comes up with slideshow on that tab, it should give you some options with your subtitles. Um, so there's two buttons that you're going to need. The first one is always use subtitles, and this tends to upload itself quicker. You can choose which part of your slides you want your subtitles on, but I find the best is just below the slide, and it'll naturally move your PowerPoint up. And then it has a selection of languages. So we have been using Ukrainian. So we tick that. So once you click to play the PowerPoint and it recognizes your microphone, it'll start to naturally put your subtitles underneath your PowerPoints. And as you move on, it will change the slide and keep these going underneath. So that is the first way in which you can use them. It works straight away from playing it and it's really, really simple. What is possibly even better than this is if we come out of the PowerPoint and the present live option, which is next to your subtitles, if you click on that, it should generate a QR code. And this QR code can be scanned by pupils in class. If you click the present live button, what will happen is this slide will appear with a QR code. Now, I have been getting our EEL pupils to scan this QR code, first of all, and also in our NAT 5, 3 and 4 class, or our NAT, in our NAT 3, 4, 5 class, pupils who are sometimes a little bit slower at copying information down, they will also scan onto it, and it pushes the PowerPoint straight onto their iPads. So they'll scan in, your PowerPoint stays on the board, but it'll also keep the subtitles on a PowerPoint, which is on their iPad alone, and they can move the slides forward. So previous issues with just using sort of teams and kids in class where they could then go ahead isn't possible anymore because they're locked onto either the slides that you've already passed or the one that you're on. 
and it will transcribe at the side the language they have selected per slide. So if you move on to the next slide and start talking, it will tell them this information was said on slide two. Um, that's better. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you so much. If you'd like to learn more about how to set up and use PowerPoint Live in more detail, then there's an excellent guide by DigiLearnFault available by scanning the QR code on the right, which will walk you through how to do everything step by step. And if you'd like to see how this looks from both the teacher and pupil perspectives, I've created the handy how-to video that you can access by scanning the QR code on the left. Next up, we have Tracy Mutter, who is a computing science teacher from Falkirk High School. Tracy is going to share some ideas of how the tool WordWall can be used as part of a classroom. Over to Tracy. Okay, so I'm Tracy Mutter and I'm a computing science teacher at Falkirk High School. So today I'm going to look at WordWall. Now this is something that I have started to look at during online learning because it's interactive and it's fun and activity for the children and they're also learning. So on the screen you can see my WordWall. I've already logged into mine. So I'm on the kind of homepage here and you can see all the things in here. Um, I'm going to create an activity. So I'm just going to put in a, a random card. And you can see that we can just enter the title. I'm just going to put the test one in. And then we're putting in our words. Okay. And you would just build up your activity like this. And then once you've finished, you're just going to tap done. Okay. Now, obviously, I haven't put enough things in there to get it to go, but you get the kind of idea that, that that's how you can create your activities. Okay. So there are lots of different types of activities that you can pick from, and you can see all the different ones there, lots of them to create. So when I actually look at the activities I have got, you can see that I have the um, first one there on the left-hand side, copy for Mixed Mail Quiz. So if I have a quick look at it, Okay, so you can see it's a multiple choice questions. You can see on the right hand side there that there are switch templates. So the children can also switch templates. So they can have it as a quiz or they can pick one of the other templates to play it. It doesn't change it for everybody. It just changes it on their screen. Okay, so the other options you can see that I have down the bottom here, I can set assignment. So if I click on that, I get choices for how I want to share this with the, the pupils. So if I want it to record their progress and things, I want to set it this way and I'm going to keep it to enter a name so the children will just put the first name in. I can set a deadline if I want to do that as well. Quite often I just set it for none and then it's open for a while. Um, I want to, at the end of the game, show the answers so that the children can see what their correct answer should have been. I don't want a leaderboard because I don't want it to be in competition with one another. I just want them to kind of see their understanding and they can start again at the end of it and it'll get them more and more shots at it. Um, so I can just start that and then all I need to do is just copy that link there and then I can paste that into my team on the Google Classroom or whatever it is that you want to paste that. So that is how you can then share that with the children. So once they have completed all of that, the way that I can check the progress then is looking into my results at the top here. So you can see that I have three things that I have already run. And my first, the top two actually, because I've just run the copy of HTML, it's there. Um, and the databases is already set up for a class for tomorrow. So the one that I do have results from is this bottom one, the HTML matching tags. So this is the information that I get back. And you can see that this is quite a lot of information here that it gives me. And quite often it's graphical information, so it's quite easy to read off of this. So I can see that I had nine students. Um, average score was only four and a half, 4.8 out of 12, which is not great, um, and 10 out of 12. So when I can see the incorrect answers, I can see that they're quite locked, but the one on this first graph that really concerns me is number 12, because nobody got that correct. So I then think, okay, what was number 12? And I can scroll down and I can see the question, and if I tap on it, you can see more information about what the answers were given. And obviously nobody has actually managed to answer that correctly. So that tells me that the children don't understand that bit and I need to go back and reteach that or do some more retrieval work around there. I can also then see the children's names. 
and then I can see the scores that they got, the ones they got correct or incorrect, and the time it took them to, to complete that activity. So normally when I'm doing this, I would create my activity myself. So you get five. Um, you can see that in my activities, I actually have three activities here. So the first two are actually mine. I've created them. So you only get five. And even if you delete one, it still counts as one of your five. So you maybe want to edit rather than delete. <laughs> um, and the third one I have there is actually somebody else's. Okay. So to get into the community resources, I'm going to tap home and then scoop to the very bottom on the iPad. And then on the left, under it says sitemap, I want to tap on community. And this is where the magic really opens up for this because there are tests on all sorts of things that you can have. So if I type in something, now quite often I find for my subject there's not a lot of things. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised to see that there's lots for computing. So you can see that there are lots and lots of things here. So if I wanted to take this maze chase game, for example, I can click onto that one. I can set it as an assignment straight from there if I wanted to. I can like it so that I can then view all my favourite ones. And if I go to more and bookmark, that will actually add it into my activities. They don't count as your five. Okay, so you can bookmark everybody else's activities that they like. They will then be in your activities, but they don't count to you as your five. It's just the ones that you make yourself. Um, so when I'm using these, I quite often will use in Apple Classroom. So I'll have saved it in my browser in Safari, and then I can issue it to the children on their iPad. So it just goes straight onto there with the Apple Classroom. So it's a great way to share the activity with them. Because they have the touch screens, a lot of them, the activities, they're like flying airplanes and things on the screen. Um, I do use it with S1 right the way through to S6, um, but I do think it could also be used in primary schools as well. So um, it's depending obviously on the questions that you put in, it would be relatable both to primary and to secondary schools. So something I've had a lot of success with, really positive results, um, a piece of positive feedback from children, so they've really enjoyed using it. So I hope you've all found something in this two for your toolkit session that you can take away, either some new tips or a new tool to try out. I'd also like to take this time to thank both Fiona and Tracy for their time and for contributing to the content of this video. Please don't forget there are lots of other places where you can access ideas and support from the Connected Falkirk team, which you can see on the screen just now. Thank you so much for watching.